tuning in to the online broadcast network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Yeah. Nah. Welcome to the After Buzz After Show TV Fall Preview Part Two. Bow, bow. There it is, Julia. We're, we're doing all oh, the um, all the fall shows. We just did Part One, which included all of the network shows. Now we're jumping into Part Two, which will include all the cable shows and CW and CW, which is a network show, but exactly. network network a broadcast I, network. Exactly. <laughs> so we're adding that there. I'm Joe Braswell. I'm joined as always by my man, my main man, Nando Velasquez. Hello, everybody. Hi again. And we're also joined by the beautiful and lovely Julia Kearley. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Well, not see you, but yeah. hey. They see you. <laughs> and we're also joined by the Joe Sanfilippo. Nice to be here with you guys. Uh, nice tie. You like my tie? I like your outfit. You can touch it after the show. I said it again. All right. The tie. It's right? still true. Okay. Uh, they, <laughs> thank That's you. a good deep V you got going there. The D- oh yeah, you I know, know I started as a deep V, but it's heading that way. It's it's heading south <laughs> fast, isn't it? <laughs> sort myself out here. All right, okay. so let's get into this. So we did part one. If you you can you can check that out on iTunes. Part one, we talked about all the network shows. We're, we're now we're doing. We I mentioned this already. We're doing the cable shows, including the CW. Let's jump right into this. Uh, TNT, <laughs> um, you know, is known for the Turner. You know, Turner has the TNT and they have the TBS. The TBS is known for their comedies, and the TNT they do sort of their sort of action offerings and drama. They had a giant, giant one of the giant biggest hits of basic cable of all time in the closer, and they have Brazilian Isles, and they've got some other stuff. So over the Falling summer, Falling Skies was a big one for them too. Yeah, and over the summer they had uh, the Last Ship, which ended, which was which ended. I know it ended. I wanted to put it on here because it's it. part of the TNT thing. Got They're it. giving me so much ish about <laughs> including the Last Ship in our fall preview. Which ended over the summer. For we, those of I, you okay, know. it's long gone. Uh, it, it's it, the, the last ship was a show, and I it was you know Michael Bay, and it was actually <laughs> oh, good, yes. and it, it was a, it was a big hit, and it's got renewed, and it has uh, uh, Eric, what's Eric that guy's Dane. name? Eric Dane, Eric Dane. heartthrob, McSteamy, McSteamy, McSteamy himself, mm-hmm. as well as uh, Adam Baldwin, who we love. So it's a great show, action stuff. Um, it's good. So that that happened, hmm. uh, and then we also have. Um, Legends Nando, which is another show that actually started already, but it's happening now. With- yeah, well, it just started like about two weeks ago, so we're, we're starting to get into stuff yeah. for the future. With, with fan but, favorite, uh, I think the thing with TNT to keep in mind is TNT had a major presence at Comic Con this year. It was their yes. biggest presence yet, uh, really based on on the foundation of Falling Skies, which is uh, ending after next season. So they are building a new slate of shows to replace Falling Skies. Legend definitely falls into that. It features Sean Bean, who many people know as, as that guy who died on Game... One of many people who died on Game of Thrones. But probably the <laughs> Spoiler biggest, alert. One, one of the biggest ones. Spoiler I'm alert. I'm not telling all of them. I'm just saying that one. At this point, if you haven't watched Game of Thrones and no, don't know that, it's then too it's late. too late. It's not our fault. It's too late. It's not our fault. We cannot be held responsible. I'm not going to... Yeah, then watch Game of Thrones. But anyway, so Sean Sean Bean is known for actually dying and a lot of other things besides that the big one was Game of Thrones. So TNT had a really smart marketing campaign, which was hashtag don't kill Sean Bean. Right. And and they actually they actually had more fun with it. Funny or Die did a feature with Sean Bean on the set of Legends trying to kill himself on purpose <laughs> on the show because he just felt that's the only way he can be an actor is if he finds really awesome ways to die. Yeah. So uh, Legends pretty much he plays an FBI uh, agent who uh, what a legend is actually for somebody to describe that it's a fabricated identity within a, a U.S. undercover job. Ooh. So that's what a legend yeah. is. So so Sean Bean has played a bunch of different legends. His his main character is Martin Odom. But in the pilot, uh, what we saw was that somebody, un- some unknown guy walks up to him and pretty much says, do you realize that you're Martin Odom, the man you think you are, is actually a legend as well. So it's really yeah. interesting having Sean Bean question his own sanity in a way yeah. uh, as to whether or not, you know, how deep he really is undercover or just going from character to character to character. So uh, it's a lot That's of interest. Cool. The, the reviews have been so-so on it. Uh, ratings have been so-so on it. But TNT is putting a lot on this. And and after what Last Ship has done, TNT is definitely a player in cable with these two shows. And frankly, Last Ship had, had some like middling reviews and the fans loved it. So yeah. it got good ratings. 
so hopefully legends will be the same and yeah giant presence at comic con i just saw sean means grill everywhere on the side of a giant of the marriott like a giant he's a phenomenal sean actor Bean, it's a shame yeah. that he dies in anything yeah so so, yeah. so we're well, looking forward to it that. seems like they're kind of doing an, an unknown thing right the liam neeson unknown movie was that the uh, similar thing right he was an agent didn't realize he was an there's agent, a little bit know. i think there's a little bit of that vibe in there yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's terrific. I think it's, I always love those things where the body, you know, when they have the, they get to have those shots where the body takes over and does things yeah. that the guy's not really aware he's doing. Yeah, he's, you know, he's so well trained. Let's uh, <laughs> let, let, let's move on to uh, <laughs> let's move on to, um, to another TNT offering, Public Morals. So that, now this is a fall show. That is a fall something that's coming. That's going to happen in the fall then. This is going to be uh, 2015. This actually, new, this is new news. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a mid season deal. Yeah, right. so this this will be. I don't have an exact date on this, but this is uh, this is this is 2015. Um, so this is uh, Steven Spielberg is actually executive producer through his Amblin uh, and Entertainment. Entertainment banner. Uh, Ten episode staff. order. Uh, so this is written by, directed by, executive produced by, and starring my man Ed Burns. All right. So that's kind of cool. So this is a pilot. It's set in 1967 in New York City's Public Morals Division. Um, and it has to do with cops that are walking the line between morality and criminality. There's a great quote in the trailer that says, our city, our city likes to have a lot of fun, all of them illegal. We do what we've done for the last 100 years and we manage it. Think of us as landlords and if you want to be in business, pay your rent. Right. So he's living he's living in this as a cop in this dark underbelly of 1967 New York and sort of managing the criminals. Everybody's making money. Everyone's safe until they're not. Right. And at the same time, he has a home life and he's trying to raise his sons um, to be morally sound. So uh, 10 episodes, like I said, it's looking really cool. I'm really excited. It, it, oh, and it's said actually to be inspired by his own, by Ed Burns' own life growing up in a family of cops in 1960s New right. York. Again, we talked about this in part one, this whole this new thing of having these, these auteurs and these directors come in and do this sort of 10-episode movie. So this is Ed Burns' offering in that. We talked about Ed Burns before as really being a sort of a very, very interesting and good director and a very good writer. And we're kind of like, you know, some of us are a little fencing on him as an actor. But if he gets when he gets in his wheelhouse... Like, he can do something well. This looks like this could be right in his wheelhouse. It looks like it's shot beautifully. He's yeah. so great with that. Um, and I, I really like his writing. I always have. Sure. Um, and actually, he's also going to be showing up on TNT as well uh, as Bugsy Siegel in TNT's oh. Mob City. Oh. So. There it is. You know, he, does, he brings a blue-collar authenticity, I think, that, yeah. that is often faked. But he seems to have it on a, on a, on a, on a, on a deeper level. Sure. So I, I really do buy a lot of what he does. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I don't buy him because they, 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 it seems sometimes they write too too much for him. And I think that that They falls. meaning him because he writes most of his own yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and those are the times <laughs> where it gets a little, a little weird. And I think sometimes right. when, he, when he guest stars is when that kind of has, has okay. been like, eh. But, uh, but when, he's, when he's playing, it seems like when he's in the right, in the right script... And, and then he really does not have an authenticity I think you can't touch. Yeah, when he's, you know, he has this sort of romantic comedy thing he does, this romantic thing he does, and he also has this, he writes himself as a romantic lead, and those movies are kind of effective, but when he does this kind of stuff, I mean, like, this is really interesting, too, so I, I like, I'm very excited. And it has a really cool cast. Is. We also have Michael Rappaport in it, and uh, Katrina uh, Bowden, Bowden yep. the hot girl from 30 Rock. Sure. Yep. Who's oh, looking yeah. really like a hot prostitute in this. Yeah. So, hey. <laughs> Good. All Nothing right. wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Joe, tell us about Proof. Uh, proof is something I'm, I'm really looking forward to this idea. Uh, not just because I love Jennifer Beals, but I love Jennifer Beals. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Another female lead, another woman of color, uh, female lead. She, uh, You know, she's all the way back to Flashdance, which is crazy yeah. to think about. Yeah. That Jennifer, I can't even get my head around that. But um, Were you born? I, I maybe right. yeah. I, was, um, I remember Flashdance. I mean Jennifer, you know that's Flashdance, the L word, the Book of Eli, Devil uh-huh. in a Blue Dress. I mean she's 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 been working forever, and she is a phenomenal actress. And she looks fantastic. She looks amazing. And she was great in the Chicago Code, which was the Sean Ryan thing that got canceled. But man, she was great in that too. I'm gonna blow your mind right now. You uh-huh. know that um, Jennifer Beals is 51 years old. No. Just, oh, hot damn! Wow. I knew it. She's she it's looks damn. astonishing. Yeah. Okay. So tell us about anyway, the show. Anyway, so we, we love besides her. how good, how <laughs> amazingly good she looks. Um, so here's what this show is. This is basically it's it, the idea behind this. She plays this uh, brilliant surgeon who has recently lost her teenage son, and and uh, her marriage is kind of collapsing around her. Matthew Modine plays a uh, he plays basically a, a, a millionaire who wants to find scientific proof that there is something after we die or nothing after we die. And she says, yeah. He basically calls her in, and she goes in and, and meets with him at, under duress. And she says, listen, we've all wondered that. Too bad. 
And he says, well, the difference is that I have the money to actually find out. So let's do this. So that's that's going to be basically what the show is about. I'm, 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 I'm going to watch the hell out of this. I like love this, this idea. Uh, uh, executive producer, uh, Kira Sedgwick, uh, Rob, Rob uh, Bragan, um, who wrote uh, Murphy Brown. Greek, sure. uh, you know, we got Tom Jacobson writing the pilot. Uh, this is very exciting stuff. Yeah. Um, Alex Graves from the West Wing, Game of Thrones, uh, who directed the pilot. I think this is going to be a really, really neat show to watch. I'm going to watch the crap out of this. Mm. Uh, so let's move over to the comedy side on TBS. We have just three three things really quickly. We have uh, your family, of, your family of mine, uh, Angie's Tribeca, and Buzzies. Julia, your family of mine. Your family of mine has actually a badass cast with uh, Richard Dreyfuss and Joe Beth Williams oh, stirring awesome. in it. Yeah. Uh, now the main leads are Cat Foster uh, and Kyle Howard. Cat Foster you might know from Till Death, and Kyle Howard from My Boys. Um, this is actually written by uh, Ground Floor creator. I love Ground Floor. I don't know if you guys ever saw that also on TBS I believe mm -hmm. ground floor creator and friends uh, alum Greg Malins this is actually based on an Israeli format uh, yeah. and this but is what I don't know it feels like it feels and looks like modern family ish but it's a, but people realize it's it's a, it's an Israeli show already. yes so right. this is centering on this uh, married young com couple who is Kat Foster and Kat Howard and Kyle Howard and um, it's sort of going along the premise of you don't just marry a person, you marry their entire family. Right. So each episode, they're going to um, bounce back and forth between each each person's, each spouse's family right. and sort of how you deal with them, how you have to put up with them, and um, all the comedy of errors that ensues with that, no, it's, it's, <laughs> as we all know. <laughs> Sure. And uh, love. Uh, Nando, want to tell us about uh, Angie's Tribeca? Angie Tribeca. Angie Tribeca. Not Angie's, but Angie. I have Angie's. Angie Tribeca. Angie Tribeca. Yes, absolutely. Angie it's Tribeca more is... More New York stuff for you. More New York It's not really New York because it's, no? it's part of the LAPD. Oh. But Tribeca is a town in New York, so I appreciate I that. Thank I just, you. It's Tribeca's in the thing. Is that her last name Tribeca? Her last name's Tribeca. Okay. Her first name, yeah. by the way, is... Spoiler alert, is Angie. Oh. That's her so first name. Angie Tribeca. Angie Tribeca. Got it. Played by the phenomenal, beautiful, stunning, amazing... Uh, uh, I can't say anything else right now, but I would love to say more. Rashida Jones, Rashida who is fabulous. Jones. This is uh, this is a pl uh, premise is based on. Well, this was brought up by Steve and Nancy Carell, so they came up with this premise. Oh. And uh, she is a detective in uh, for the LAPD for the H uh, R H C U unit. I guess it's it's calls. Uh, it stands for Really Heinous Crimes Unit. <laughs> <laughs> And as you can imagine, uh, it's a comedy. It's on TBS. It's it's. I it looks incredibly. So. Um, well, is, it, that, is that near the stalker unit? It, it looks incredibly <laughs> funny. And I think the fact that uh, uh, Steve and Nancy Carell are the showrunners, uh, it allows them to bring a lot of their friends in on board. And they have a lot of good actors. Uh, Steve Carell came from uh, improv, doing Second City and all that. So obviously, we see a lot of comedians in there, uh, and a lot of good people, even in the in the pilot. Uh, besides, well, first of all, Rashida Jones's parents are played by her real life parents which are Quincy Jones uh -huh. and Peggy Lipton yeah really? so they're in the pilot that's cool yeah but also in this pilot you have Alfred Molina mm -hmm. you have Gary Cole yeah. you have Jerry Burns so you know Lisa Kudrow yeah oh, Lisa wow. Kudrow's yeah. in it yeah. so heavy hitters. there's a lot of heavy hitters in here so obviously Steve's calling up all his friends Steve and Nancy are calling up their friends and uh, it has a bit of a police squad it's sure. yeah. feel to it which I like. So, I mean, you might think of it like with Brooklyn, um, Brooklyn, Brooklyn 99. Brooklyn 99, yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's a little bit more to me like a, a police squad feel to it with Rashida in the lead. It, and uh, it just, it looks really cute. It's, it's going to be silly. It's going to be tongue in cheek. It yeah. Looks, and like, you know, there's a great, a great shot in the, in, in the preview where there's, you know, the guy's doing a huge backflip and then the, the stunt double jumps off one side, he jumps out the other. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah. Very, it's very funny. <laughs> you know, and I, I think love that, um, uh -huh. you know, the last thing is people, Rashida Jones is freaking hilarious. She's so hilarious. People don't realize that she's actually got some comedy chops. And yeah. She's, she's great from, she's great in Parks and Rec. And so, really excited about this. Well, Joe, tell me about Buzzies. Great title. Buzzies is, uh, it, it's, uh, yeah. basically, this is going to be, uh, this is an interesting idea. Um, okay. Show cast includes Ashley Tisdale, Mike Castle, Lauren uh, Lapkus. Uh, Ryan Pinkson, Matt Cook, and George Went. Basically, what they're doing here is it's a uh, it's a, a barber shop that is having financial trouble, and uh, and basically it sounds like it's kind of like uh, Central Perk, but it's a barber shop and no one ever leaves. So um, <laughs> so that is basically the show. Is we follow everybody that's at the barber shop, in and around the barber shop. Uh, George Went. Cheers. Uh, you know that's going to be a lot of fun. He, yes. he many, Norm. Norm is back on TV. Norm. Um, this comes from uh, David Cohen and uh, Max uh, Muchnick from, uh, now these are the guys who created Will and Grace. Yep. So uh, I, I have high hopes. Um, it you, looks interesting. You, 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 I thought you didn't like it. I, 
I'm uh, putting you on the spot. I want to. I, I think it's going to okay. be. It's going to be. It's going to be a, a stretch if it, if it works. The Will and Grace guys are, are funny and they've got a great. You know, they, they, they've 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 created. You know, one of the funniest shows and most creative shows in history. So I like to think that this may be good. But you know, I was a little. Eh, we'll and you see. know, sometimes though, with those previews, you don't know. Yeah, you Maybe don't know. It might just be a, 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 a edit. You know. Okay. Well, let's move on to. Uh, then that's TBS. That's TNT and TBS. Let's move on to the CW True TV area. Uh, we're sort of combining networks now because then everyone has a bunch of offerings. Uh, for the CW, I do want to talk about The Flash, which is another mm. you know comic book DC thing. And I will say, I you know of all the CW because they have Warner Brothers and Warner Brothers owns DC, so they have all the comic book properties. Of all the CW stuff, I didn't really you know didn't really get into Smallville, didn't really get into Arrow, which I know your your husband loves. Of course uh, he does. But of course he does. <laughs> of course he does. Uh, for those but, of you who don't know, Eric Curley is king yes. of the nerds. <laughs> but I'm very but very excited. And he has a beard. He is their king. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very, very excited about the Flash. I mean, this is this is, actually looks like the Flash that I was because I've always loved the Flash as a kid, and there's been a lot of talk, and even they brought it. I think CBS did one years ago, and um, there's been a lot of talk of bringing the Flash movie and bringing mm-hmm. the Flash to life. And I feel like the technology and the and the, to- and the storytelling has caught up with that the ability to tell the story, and it the pilot is phenomenal, and I'm super, super excited about them staying true to the character, uh, the Barry Allen character who is the Flash, and um, you know, there's a cross, some crossover there with with Arrow, and I'm well, they really already excited had, about this. They already had his origin story on Arrow, right? So yeah, they already showed a little bit of that. So people who follow Arrow will already be caught up to uh, to this. It's not really an origin story, I believe, from where they're taking off in the pilot. Sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, Smallville was great for the network, and Arrow was. So they're continuing their DC slate. Uh, you know, DC does really good TV. Yeah, you know yeah. Uh, their movies still need some work. I mean, we'll, we'll wait and see what happens with uh, Batman vs Superman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't but uh, but uh, yeah, let's not get on that. But uh, yeah, but actually, their TV slate has been good <laughs> since Smallville, yeah. and the Flash looks really promising. There's a good uh, there's a good cast in there. I saw on the t- on the uh, chat room uh, that somebody was mentioning actually Dominic uh, Purcell and Wentworth yeah. Miller are in sure. the cast from Prison Break. Wentworth. So thank you uh, Ryan uh, for that one. But yeah, well, definitely a really good uh, really good cast. I'm just pulling up whatever else because I can't Both remember. The Break guys, Danielle. Actually. Yeah, they're both yeah. they're both Prison Break guys. Yeah. Exactly, they're reuniting. They were brothers on Prison yes, Break, and yes. here they are on here. Daniel Panabaker's in there. Uh, I saw Jesse L. Martin. Yeah, a couple other good names there. Yeah, so. Stephen Amell's uh, actually, you know, so he does a little cameo in there as Arrow. So we get to see a lot more of that. So very very cool. excited about Absolutely. this. Absolutely, fantastic. That. The previews look fantastic. Yeah, it does. Uh, Nando, tell me about this uh, this this thing. Uh, Jane the Virgin. Jane the Virgin. Oh my God, this is uh, this is pretty funny actually. I actually. I gotta say. I, I found it to be quite a sweet uh, little preview that funny. I saw. I was kind you of know, into it. CW, CW kind of like ABC, they like to, to focus on a, their diversity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So this definitely appeals to the Latinos in in, uh, in the audience. It has a typical telenovela feel. Mm-hmm. Kind of, uh, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of Ugly Betty a little bit in mm-hmm. that kind of sense. And the idea is uh, Jane is a virgin, as the title says, and uh, she's a very good girl. She will not, uh, she will not, have sex with anyone until she she's married. She won't flower. give up her. She won't give up her flower. Yes, absolutely. Like she's framed above her bed. Is my <laughs> and <laughs> and creepy. due to a due to an unfortunate circumstance, uh, she's going for a pap smear, and instead, uh, the doctor she got pap smear. She got yeah. The doctor ends up inseminating her instead uh, oh. because of a little mix up with the uh, with seal, the room. Seal, <laughs> seal mix up. <laughs> it's seal old mix up. Seal one two. So her super religious mom, who who's the one who told her all about don't giving up the not no, giving grandma. Up grandma. Oh, grandma. Because thinks, her mom was sixteen when she got mm-hmm. pregnant. With her. That's right. Well, yeah, absolutely. But uh, anyway, they think it's a miracle. She, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so a awesome. miracle, and then they find out what happened. And what makes matters worse is the the sperm of uh, that she was inseminated with was from this guy that she actually was interested in, who oh. she had her first kiss with, and uh, he ended up cheating on his girlfriend. She found out, so they uh, obviously held it off. But Jane is also in a relationship with somebody else. So it's this whole big. It, it has this very big soap opera y telenovela feel. Uh, I'm not the right audience for it, but I have to admit, I actually liked watching it. I was totally into so, the trailer that we saw. I thought sweet. it was really sweet. It was cute. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, all the scenes I saw, I, I thought were very well acted, and, yeah. and it was kind of quirky at the same time. I think it I plays gotta, off a little bit more to the Latino community, but I really think it's worth a watch. Well, I, I gotta t- tell t- you, I, I I've never heard of anything quite like it. I think it is very unique. Very mm-hmm. unique. 
very yeah. virgin. The last time this happened was two thousand years ago, and <laughs> uh, it got some people have been excited about it ever since. So, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, well, I, well I, I, just I, I think it's a great idea. I think, I, I think it looks concept. really cute. It looks fantastic, and it does fit right into the the other CW brand, which is young and sort of that gossip girls kind of like you know young female skewing demographic, and also that's some some, some Latino telenovela. I can't see any it. other network great. doing this yeah. show. Well, yeah, maybe, that's but for some reason. Call. It feels really good on a CW. Right. So we'll Your see. Look, look, looking yeah. forward to yeah. that. Joe, what's Fake Off? I, I couldn't find much on Fake Off, to okay. be perfectly honest with you. It's, cool. It's, it's kind of a hidden thing out there. It's, it looks like it's a new improv show. Okay. And uh, it sounds a bunch of new kids, new kids breaking out. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and and that's about as much as I was able to dig up on now, it. You're an improv guy. That's the best improv you could do about the that's improv it. show. That's, that's all I've got. got. It's a, uh, you nothing? I got, <clears> all right. I uh, Julia. <laughs> Good. Man, what do you got? No, I mean, I was looking it up before, but, uh, you know, pass on that. Okay. We'll talk about it later. Right. Julia, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, Friends of the People? Friends of the People. Now, that's premiering on October 28th on True TV. Uh, this is actually True TV's first sketch comedy show. Um, they're usually a reality based show, so this is a big this is a big risk for them. Um, and it's sort of they were saying I was you know going do, through my research and they're saying it's part of an effort to diversify its programming on True t- on. True TV. Sure. Um, so this is going to feature a lot of scripted comedy sketches, man on the street interviews, and the cast is actually made up of many of the comedians and writers from Fox's failed uh, In Living Color reboot. So we yeah. see Kevin Barnett, um, Jennifer Bartles, Jermaine Fowler, and some others. Uh, so it looks really funny, actually. From what I've seen, they, there's a clip that you can see online, the untold history of Urkel, which is kind of clever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, check that out. Yeah, it looks like it's funny. I mean, it could be has some, some shades of Key and peel. Fox did try to bring back A Living Color. It didn't quite work out. So they, yeah. but a lot of funny young people came from that, uh, including those twins in the foreground uh, who were very funny, who were, who were in, um, I just saw them in a movie they I can't remember. Never mind. Anyway... <laughs> um, Love. And the cast members also serve as uh, the writers as well as the executive producers. So they, right. it looks like they have their hands in every part of it yeah. so they can so really shape it's like it up. A co-op to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can yeah. shape it to be what they want and stick to what they really think is funny. Well, fantastic. Yeah. Well, uh, let's move over into uh, Lifetime MTV, DirecTV Showtime, and in that zone. Um, uh, we have some shows to talk about. I want to talk about a Showtime show. I mentioned earlier, I mentioned The the Nick, which is fantastic, which, we, which I, which so I brilliant love The done. Nick. Uh, can't say enough about it. If you haven't seen it, Check it out. It's brilliant. Um, but also on Showtime, they have f- something coming called The Affair, which I'm really excited about. Uh, it's, it's, it stars my guy Dominic West, who you may, not know, may or may not know from The uh, the Wire, who's fantastic. Mm. And it also stars Joshua Jackson, who you may or may not know from Dawson's Creek and some other stuff. <laughs> Pacey. Pacey. Uh, my boy Pacey's back. Uh, and, um, and Ruth Wilson. And you know, it's basically it's it's, it's hard to it's 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 a it's a deep dive look at infidelity. Um, you know, there this couple that sort of gets together. There's a murder. It's in the, the trailer is very sort of like doesn't tell a lot, but it's it's this really sort of interwoven, extremely um, psychological character piece that sort of deals with um, the psychological effects of being in running up to and having an affair and then the results of this affair and then having to deal with it through the eyes of this uh, this this uh, crime. Also, Martini, Martin, Tierney is back there as well. You may recognize from ER. Oh, yeah. uh, great cast. Uh, looks super sexy and super interesting and it looks, I, I think it looks great. I don't know. Joe, did you... Did you... I always get so nervous. It makes with, you, you, it makes, you get all weird. Why, why oh, do you get so weird watching the trailer? You know, there, there's, it's, it's always so funny. I've been married for 12 years, and so there's always there, – it's funny when I see a show like this, and I go – you know, because you don't really know, uh, you know, as a married guy, you don't see a lot of the pitfalls coming. And it looks to me like when I see a show like this where a guy's happily married and he just finds himself falling into something wrong yeah. and it's going to destroy his life. And, and I just and, – and obviously the lives of everyone involved – and it just it, it hits me and it scares me. Yeah, I'm you're like, like Boo, I can leave the right. Room. I, I, I just, I'm, <laughs> like, I'm like, am I am, am I that vulnerable too? Can you make can, anybody can be that stupid? I think is what you know what the the, the lesson to be taken away is. Well, you, you take a bunch of great actors and you know and really in, the, in this piece and they're really good at sort of playing up. You know, I mean, this is from what it looks like. So the, the again the psychological piece. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Julia, tell me about Deliverance Creek. Uh, Deliverance Creek is actually coming to us from the best-selling author Nicholas Sparks, who you oh. all know from mm. The Notebook, A Walk to Remember, Save Haven, Save Haven, all those 
sappy, sappy tear like. jerkers because Joe know, doesn't like love. I hate love. Joe hates <laughs> love. I, um, love. <laughs> I love love, but Nicholas Sparks. I mean, so you know. this is actually his first, uh, this is his television debut. Sure. Because uh, he does a gajillion movies of his best selling books. Yes. So he's got some, he's doing all right for himself. He's like not, he's like young. He's like 45. Uh, yeah, absolutely. He, he really hit the jackpot. So, yeah. okay, so Deliverance Creek is a two-hour period film. It's actually going to serve as a backdoor pilot for an hour-long drama. Uh, mm. It's starring Lauren Ambrose, Wes Ramsey, Christopher Backus, Riley Smith. And um, so it looks like it's two years into the Civil War, and we have the character played by Lauren Ambrose, Belle Gatlin Barlow. And... Um, What's happening to her? She faces uncertainty oh. at the life. Uh, 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 she's defending her family's I, 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 land. I'm, I'm going to go out. Does, <laughs> there we do, go. Does she fall in love? I, I don't know if it's. Okay. Yeah, she falls in love. She <laughs> okay, falls yeah. in love real hard. Is, is there rain? But it looks. Is there there'll rain? probably be some rain. I do they have a beard? Him. And I, do they make out in the rain? I don't happening. know. He's going to ask you about I geese in a minute. I do not know. <laughs> is there a sparks. boat and are there geese? There's just, okay. So she's a mom and she's attempting to defend her family's land during the Civil War and she she gets kind of badass, it looks. I mean, they don't show too much in the preview, but she she's toting a gun. She's shooting yeah. away and she's yeah. standing up for what she believes in. She's a mother and there's a corrupt bank that runs uh, their town. So she needs to stand up to them and decide if she's gonna is better to be good or just to try to survive. And there might be some love. There's okay. a little bit of love. I, there know. might be love. There might be some some like you know rolling in the wheat fields. Sure. You know I I really like where we're kind of getting to. We're getting to a place you know as a society where we can actually portray the Civil War era and 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 the pre Civil War era with some reality. And and I'm hoping I'm hoping that this show does that. It looked it looked that way in what we saw of the pilot. So I mean I, it, to me it's a very exciting idea that we can actually show it how it was. It was grim, life was short, it was violent, it was extremely religious, it was extremely bigoted. And so I'm hoping that all that comes across in the show because that I think is something that's worth watching. If it's another sure. if it's a whitewash uh, uh you know like a lot of civil war movies were in in the in the, in the 80s and 90s, they're just not there's almost no fun to watch. Yeah. Well, where everybody's heroed and and and, and, you know, heroification. So I'm hoping that this winds up being something a little more uh, substantial. Sure. Um, uh, Joe, why don't you tell us about uh, Happy Land? On a completely different note. Yeah, how about that segue? <laughs> uh, this, is, this is an MTV show that really looks... I, I'm a Disney nerd, so the idea of a show taking place at Disneyland... Or ha Happy Land. Right. Is, Watch is, yourself there. Probably. Right. Be careful. Um, <laughs> they were very, see, they said Happy, not Disney. Right. Um, the idea here is that basically all these kids work at Happy Land, which is some amalgamation of Magic Mountain, which which of Six Flags and Disney uh, combined. Uh, a lot of it was shot up at Six Flags up here in, in, uh, in, in Awesome Town. And, uh, Valencia. Valencia. What it looks like to me, <laughs> it, it, what, what, this is, what this show is basically is a bunch of of tweens and twenty somethings that work at the park and, and we follow them and it's it's obvious that their life is not a fantasy, but they you know, they keep portraying one for everybody else. And uh, the, the new CEO of the com of the uh, of the park, uh, his son has kind of snuck in. He he hasn't announced himself, but he's gotten a job as a character and so he's kinda in with these kids, kinda exist in their world, trying to kinda get along without telling anybody, Hey, I'm the boss's son. He, he falls in love with this gal who's kind of the lead. She falls in love with him. And then they start making out. And once they start making out, then her mom comes along and says, Oh, no, I just got a letter from the president of the park. And he's probably your dad. Incest. And so that's about where the yeah. pilot lands. Yeah. So it's a really interesting. Yes. Idea. It's like one of those things you're watching the pilot. Like, I, I get this. I see what this. Oh, dang. <laughs> you know? MTV is a long way away from Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, so this is <laughs> so this is kind of what's become the buzz of the show is this yes. kiss is this idea of incest. So um, not sure. I mean, it's kind of a it, it, you know it's kind of a dangerous way to go because if you go down the incest road, everybody goes uh, no, and if you don't go down the incest road, you kind of promised that you were and then you didn't. So it's kind of an interesting place they put themselves in. But on the upshot, it has generated a tremendous amount of buzz. About I mean, look, that show. It, 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 MTV has got a mega mega hit on their hands with Teen Wolf. <laughs> that thing is a is a is a beast. I mean, no pun intended. And like you know, we're at Comic Con. It was like the second most talked about thing at Comic Con, like in front of like big movies. So uh, you know, they're they're really doing something right over there. And um, we'll see. I mean, they 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 have the eyes and ears of millennials as they always did. And it's just a different time. So old guys like me who are like, where are the videos? Like you know, they they don't care because they're they're making hits. Uh, Nando, tell me about um, tell me about the kingdom. Or kingdom. kingdom. It's the called Kingdom. 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 Now, yes. This, this is a guy's name, Fred Kingdom. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's the guy's name. Okay, got uh, it. Yeah, so anyway, so Kingdom, it's uh, it's on DirecTV. It's going to be on the audience channel on DirecTV. And it premieres October 7th, if I remember correctly. I don't have it mm-hmm. in front of me. But it's a family drama set in the MMA world uh, over mm-hmm. at a gym in Venice. And it has such an awesome cast. I mean, Frank Grillo. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. God. You got to love Frank Grillo. Uh, Matt Loria, who uh, I love from Friday Night Lights. Uh, a big surprise here, Nick Jonas. Oh, is that the Jonas that Brothers? Yeah, yeah. he's Jonas. in this one too. Oh man, absolutely. Yeah, and then I believe I say your name right. As if I say it, Kylie Sanchez. Anyway, it, it's really good. The trailer definitely it goes into the MMA world. Frank Little struggling with his gym to just make ends meet. You know, it's one of those types of gritty uh, shows. And I really, you know, I don't have direct TV. So uh, I really want to see if I can get my hands on this and, and watch this because it yeah, looks really, really good. MMA is such a big sport. It's <clears> so <throat> in right now. Just it, it makes so much sense to do a, a, a show around this kind of world, the family drama. Uh, you know, it's a little bit of a warrior feel to it, too. So, yeah. you know, it's it's very gritty in a way. And I, I just love warrior that. Warrior the David Mamet movie with uh, Tom Hardy and yes. uh, Chulto. Yes. yes, that yeah, warrior. Yes, very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, don't sleep, on, don't sleep on Nick Jonas. I mean, he was... Uh, He's been he was, doing some Broadway yeah, lately. Yeah, Mar- he's Marius. He's Marius in, uh, in Les Mis. Uh-huh. Marius in Les Mis. He did a stint on uh, in How to Succeed yeah. for a while. So, so like, he's, 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 he's doing, doing it. it. Yeah, I'm not, no, I'm not mad at him. He seems pretty buff for this, too. So, yeah, definitely you got to be in shape to be on the show. Sure. Because, yeah, they're all kind of keep up. Fighters. No and, doubt. You know, it looks like DirecTV kind of didn't pull any punches on this. They've got, I mean, I watched the pilot, uh, not the pilot, I beg your pardon, I watched the, 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 the four or five minute trailer in a restaurant and uh, I, I got some looks because, I mean, they are, they're dropping F-bombs more yeah. than, yeah. Than, than dinner at my parents' house. So. <laughs> yeah. So well, talk folks. about the McCarthy's from last show. That's it. Uh, yeah. So we did. Yeah, that, right. that's your typical East Coast family that's right it. there. Just yes. uh, throwing out the F-bombs and that's their, their way of loving each other. Uh, loving pig, each other up with insults. and throw out some F-bombs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so, Nana, while we have you here, why don't you tell us about Z Nation as well? <laughs> sure. While you have me here, let's talk about Z Nation. Z Nation right. is going to be on Sci-Fi Network. Uh, you know, I don't have a date for it right now. Um, I'll have to pull it up. But Z Nation pretty much is sci fis uh you know attempted doing their walking dead type show yeah. <laughs> that's that's the best way of putting it you know it, it, from reading the synopsis and looking into it it kind of reminds me a bit of the last of us the video game yeah where there is somebody who may have the cure to the zombie apocalypse in their blood yeah. and and it's oh, all like about patient zero kind of like a patient mm-hmm. zero type thing so so yeah it's all about the journey of taking that uh person from new york to california so this is another zombie show well it's another zombie show in the fact that yeah it's it's uh there's zombies there's zombies in it, <laughs> okay. yeah. I now mean, it's right. zombies with a possible cure. That's, yeah, that's okay. a whole different with a possible game. cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I mean, the only other big notable zombie show out there, obviously, is Walking Dead. There are a lot right. of zombie movies, uh, but yeah. So I guess this is their way of getting into into the zombie phenomena. Sure. A, a little late, but still, it's still promising. Hey man, z- zombies are still hot. Yeah, I, I hate mm-hmm. zombies. So for me, it's it's I'm always out on zombies. So this has nothing to do with the show. My face has nothing. Just I hate zombies. You hate right. zombies. I hate zombies. What's not to like about zombies? I don't uh, like a zombie. The whole thing right. falling off them and then wanting to eat your brains. Oh, I don't that's care endearing. For uh, Shaun of the Dead, no? See that one? Nope. I, just, I saw it. Yeah, that was right. a good one. You didn't even uh, like yeah. that one. I don't, I don't one. like zombies. Right. But you're those dead were or funny you're not dead. zombies. Uh, Julia, yes? t- tell me about this thing, Dig. Dig. That looks. Awesome. Dig looks awesome. But I can't find all that much content-wise. Fair enough. Um, but from what I did in my research, it's a show that's going to be on USA starring Anne Heche and Jason Isaacs, mm. who yes. I adore. Um, and it's created by Gideon Raff of Homeland and, Tom, and Tim Kring from Heroes. Sure, so sure. That's, I that's mean. A, it's a double, it's a one-two punch right there. Right? Uh, so it stars Isaacs as Peter Connolly, and he's an FBI agent stationed in Jerusalem. And he's investigating a murder surrounding a young uh, female archaeologist. And he uncovers a conspiracy to thousand years in the making and Hayes stars as uh, Lynn Monahan, and she's the head of the Jerusalem FBI office and Peter's boss and casual lover mm. uh, <laughs> I've never had a casual lover no I feel like I've missed no, the boat I'm not saying I have but You're like, no, oh, no? Uh, everyone's at a home interesting this was shot uh, mostly in the pilot lease was shot mostly in Jerusalem but mm-hmm. they had to pull out because uh, things got a little hot and heavy there sure so people they're shooting in Albuquerque. You know, well, people you know, shooting, well, shooting rockets, rockets at them. I should say that Gideon Rapp is the creator of the, of the Israeli, the original Homeland, which is the yes. Israeli one. And so like that's why he's uh, so, you know, obviously that Howard um, Gordon, those guys took over for the, 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 the Homeland here and Gideon was part of that. But the fact that he's gone back and sort of done this American show for USA, but set in Jerusalem is very interesting. And he obviously knows what he's doing and knows how to write and create some stuff. And he's partnered with... Um, 
uh, Tim Kring of Heroes fame. That I mean, I'm just really excited. And Isaacs and Haish. I mean, this is what's 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 wrong with this show? What's also really cool. Uh, there's this thing called Dig the Official Prequel, which is on Wattpad. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And um, it's sort of uh, each week there's a new chapter from the backstory um, from these characters, sure. and each week the readers can uh, learn something new that takes them right up to the pilot of this. Wow, well, well, that's well, really so that's kind of cool. And that's a that's a 12 part serialized prequel, and, and it's it, written by the Dig writers. Great. And last one, where, where can you find that? Uh, Wattpad app and Wattpad.com. That's cool. Awesome. And idea. now just to clarify this, is this another like 10 episode, 8 episode? This is like a thing. This yeah, is it's a an event series, series. Right? Yeah, I think it's okay. 6 episode event okay. series. All right. So that's so we're really excited. So look for that. That should be exciting. Um, I think that does it. I mean, you know, the cable, we, we kind of blew through the cable here, but uh, I think that about does it. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, who, who, who wins cable? You know, mm. I mean, I guess it's TNT, right? That's like who wins the internet. I know. I, I, it, I feel like it's TNT. TNT's got the got the goods as always. Well, so. TNT does have the last ship. That's going to be yeah. exciting when that comes out. When that comes back, I don't know. <laughs> or out. CW has the Flash I and say, Jane the Virgin. I, oh, CW might. Move. I mean, CW. It may we be didn't very put them in. Tweeny of me, but we, we I'm kind put, of digging those. CW wins cables. What you're saying? <laughs> you're saying that. <laughs> yeah. It, it didn't make it to the broadcast show that we did, but it, it wins cable. Okay. It wins. Cable. Cable. Fair yes, enough. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you know, it. I gotta say, I really, I mean, Angie Tribeca really interests me. I, but although Kingdom for a direct TV, I think that's gonna really show them to be a major player. Yeah. yeah Angie yeah. Tribeca yeah. looks really that's funny. That's gonna be really interesting. Yeah. Well, well, thank you for joining us for part two of our uh, fall TV preview. Um, you know, us four of us will be back for some After Buzz show, at least one After Buzz show or two. The Blacklist, for uh, sure, will return. For sure, absolutely. be back for the Blacklist. And mm-hmm. uh, we have another show, another little sort of a thing that we have working out. We've been teasing for a while, but we're very close to getting that going. So, so hopefully we'll see you on that thing, yeah. whatever that thing is. And uh, in the meantime, Joe, where can awesome. we find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, on Facebook, on the Facebook. <laughs> okay. On I'll Twitter. Again. Joe, Joe, find Facebook. You. <laughs> uh, you can find me on Twitter at Joe Filippo, J-O-E-F-L-I-P-O, also okay. on Instagram. And uh, you can find me, my website is josephsanfilippo.com. Outstanding. Uh, and Instagram? You said he that. Said right? it. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> he's not happy about it, <laughs> but he said it. Julia Kearley. Let's go find you. You can find me on Twitter and happily on Instagram. Oh, there you uh, go. With my name, Julia Kearley, which is J U L I A C E A R L E Y. Follow me. Nando? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Nandovel, N A N D O V E L, and uh, here on Blacklist with you guys and a couple other shows this fall as well. I also have a website, but I got to update it nandovelasquez.com. All right. Okay. Yeah. And you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at JoeKBraswell.com. Thank you for joining us. It's good to be back. We'll see you at The Blacklist and some other shows coming up soon. Uh, You know, comment, write, whatever you got to do. We'll see you later. Thanks. Woo! From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Bye. Bye. See you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.